Hi everyone, welcome to your first set of video notes for Unit 5. We're actually going to get through our first two pieces of notes within the packet you got for Unit 5. So let's get started. First thing to discuss is the rhythm of sleep. So we got to talk about the circadian rhythm. It's your body's biological clock and it operates on kind of a 24 hour cycle um, of determining whether or not we should be asleep or awake and that's often determined by the amount of light that our eyes send to the hypothalamus and specifically the suprachiasmatic nucleus. Say that three times fast. The SCN is going to help the hypothalamus recognize what light is being presented to us through our eyes here in this visual. So the SCN receives input from your eyes, so does the hypothalamus, and it's very sensitive to um, those cycles of the day when it is lighter out versus darker out. And what it will do is operate on light signals that will tell the pineal gland to stop releasing a chemical called, it's a neurotransmitter called melatonin. They sell it over the counter actually for you to be able to take um, supplements of melatonin to help you fall asleep and to establish a more normal sleep pattern. So the pineal gland is what releases the melatonin that makes you feel sleepy. Light signals tell the pineal to stop releasing the melatonin so you'll be able to wake up. And darkness um, says to the SCN that it shouldn't send that message out anymore to stop the production of, or the producing of melatonin, that it should actually have you um, have that going through your system. So it's melatonin that enables you to you know, determine sleepiness. So we say that circadian rhythms f are facilitated by 24-hour cycles, but interestingly enough, if a person is left completely undisturbed, no alarm clock, no um, detection of light or dark, if you were just kept in you know, a contained dark room, your circadian rhythm would actually function more on a 25-hour cycle than 24 which is pretty interesting because we're not used to thinking kind of outside of that box of the realm of 24 hours in a day. Very important that you recognize that under normal circumstances, our circadian rhythm undergoes multiple kind of daily or weekly shifts in how we are going to go about establishing our sleep patterns and adjustments based on our exposure to light and just the habitual routines we move into. So you guys know that I get up disturbingly early in the morning. I'm up at 5 a.m. every day during the school week. So when I move into summer, it's really hard for me to get out of that habit of my body just automatically waking me up at 5 a.m. because my circadian rhythm has been established based on my routine during the school year for those nine months to get up at that point in time. So this visual here is going to be kind of confusing. It's located in your textbook as well, so I want to spend a little bit of time of clarifying it for you because it is important that you know the differentiations between the brain waves, their names, and what stages they occur in sleep because you will be required to know that. So the basic sleep cycle happens within the first 90 minutes of when you fall asleep. Stages two, through four and REM will occur all the way throughout the night as you sleep. Stage one, however, happens only in the first 90 minutes that you are asleep. Anytime you are going through a night of sleep, you have 90 minute sleep cycles. So you will shift through everything and start new cycles after every 90 minutes. So the normal functioning person, if you get um, you know, seven hours of sleep, seven or eight hours of sleep, you will, or even higher than that, you'll get anywhere from four to six cycles of sleep in, in any given night. The longer that you sleep, the more obviously that you will go through the sleep cycles. So let's discuss all of these uh, a little more in depth. Might be a good idea for you after each one of these discussions to pause it for yourself so you can write these down or clarify what they mean. Um, just because it's not going to be terribly clear for you on the notes packet itself. So when you are awake and alert, so while you're doing this right now, you are hopefully pretty awake, these are beta waves that are occurring in your brain. So if we were to you know, stick an EEG and we put electrodes all over your head, we would be able to determine that beta waves are occurring as you are awake. Now, as you find yourself starting to kind of fade off 
towards sleepiness, you're going to experience alpha waves. Okay, so notice these are a little bit higher in terms of the height of their frequency. Then you'll move into stage one. This is the first stage of NREM or REM uh, stage right here. We'll talk about that in a second. I refer to this typically as NREM. So stage one is when you start to feel um, like you're fading into you know a stage of sleep. Okay. Oftentimes this is when you can have um, those what we refer to as sleep starts. You kind of feel like you're you know having a bit of a dream and you're walking down the street for the sidewalk for example and then all of a sudden you trip and you gotta wake up. You feel like you just startled up and so that's why we call them sleep starts. It's during these stages actually when people can have um, hallucinations. They can think for example that their home is on fire, like they could smell burning. There have been many scenarios of people reporting to hear their name when they're fading into this stage of sleep. And your textbook actually alludes to the fact that this stage is oftentimes what ends up explaining why it is that people feel that they have been abducted by aliens. Um, because basically what they're experiencing isn't necessarily a dream, it's a hallucination. Uh, and that is occurring because of stage one sleep. They believe that this happens because it's kind of like a defense mechanism. It's established from evolutionary experiences because back in the day when we were Cro-Magnon man, um, you didn't have a, a nice safe roof over your head. You were still sleeping out in the elements. And so it was kind of developed as a um, safety valve, so to speak, for your brain to kind of try to jolt you back away to say, hey, um, it, you need to make sure that you are in a safe place for you to be able to sleep. And research that's been done on animals shows that animals that are typically predatory have very, very long amounts of sleep. So lions, tigers, things like that. Animals that are typically prey, however, they tend to only stay in these earlier stages of sleep, very short bursts of sleep from these stage one areas because their survival depended on that. As we move into stage two of NREM, this is what we consider to be true sleep. So this is where we're gonna have our 90 minute cycle start for the remainder of your sleep cycle while you are asleep. Stage two is characterized by two different kinds of spindles. The first set are sleep spindles. Okay, so these are very, very quick bursts of um, high brain activity. Okay, so it's very important that you recognize your brain is always active while you're asleep. We have this perception out there that if you are asleep, you're unconscious, so to speak, and you're not aware of your surroundings. And to, that, to some extent, that's true. Uh, but your brain is always active while you are asleep, and it can pick up on sensory experiences that are occurring you know, outside to you uh, while you're asleep it's fully capable of picking up on those and that's oftentimes why you can you know wake up at the sound of your door creaking open while you can um, you know hear certain things happening and those can wake you up um, and things along those lines so stage two is characterized by sleep spindles followed by K complexes these are um, very high high amplitude waves within the EEG spectrum then you get theta brain waves, okay? And these um, begin to kind of dim down into uh, these waves down here to send you into stage three. And then you get delta waves. Delta waves are the ones that show truly that a person is in deep sleep. So this is when the brain is at its slowest in terms of activity. Stage three, you don't really know, need to know a whole lot about it necessarily. Most um, psych scientists don't necessarily focus in on it. It's basically just a transitional stage into stage four, which is the deepest stage of sleep. So stage three is very similar to stage one in that it's kind of a transitional. Stage one is your um, stage from being awake to transition into true sleep with stage two. Stage three is your transition to go into stage four, which is true deep sleep. This is characterized by delta waves, so um, very slow kind of wave movement within the brain. This is when it's at its least active, um, and that's where delta waves are present. REM sleep is when your brain is the most active. Just because you're in a deep sleep with stage four doesn't necessarily mean that it's your most restful. REM sleep has actually been determined to be your most restful stage. 
REM stands for rapid eye movement. So literally, if you're watching somebody in REM sleep, you can see their eyes moving under their eyelids very, very rapidly while they're in this stage. This is when true dreaming occurs, and we've determined through research that this is you know, the kind of restorative portion of sleep that your brain needs um, to really feel charged and energized. Stage four, even though you're in the deep sleep here, we would assume that that would mean that it's very restful for you, but that's not necessarily the case. It just means that it's your hardest stage to wake up from. If someone were to wake you up during stage four, for example, you could uh, have a 15 minute conversation with them on the phone and then go back to bed and then not remember it later on. Um, this is very common actually for my, for my sister-in-law. She is in her residency. She's an anesthesiologist. And when she was in med school, my brother would call her. He'd, he'd set his own alarm at 4.30 because she was always so concerned she was going to sleep through her alarm and miss a shift, and, and that would just be you know devastating. So my brother would set his alarm for 4.30 in the morning so that way he could call her and make her talk to him so she would wake up. And so they would call, and he would call, they would have conversation with one another, and then inevitably, she'd, you know, they'd get off the phone with one another, he'd call her back later again later that night when she was done with her shift, and she would have no memory of that conversation whatsoever. So it's a pretty common thing to happen when you're in stage four. So this is the basic sleep cycle with a very in-depth explanation incredibly important that you make sure that you have this available to you and that you've written down everything that we've discussed including examples in terms of the behavior and what goes on because it will be very much tested um, when we get to the end of the unit. So quick recap here for these sleep stages. Stage one, not technically true sleep, only present in the first 90 minute cycle when you are fading into that state of altered consciousness. Light sleep is characterized by stages one and two. Stage one is transitory. It is when you're just drifting into sleep and this is when you're going to have those, you know, kind of sleep start hallucinatory kind of dreams, not story-like, like most of them typically are from REM. Sleep stage two has spindles. Um, so these are short bursts of brain activity and uh, K-complexes moving into theta wave. This is more relaxed. This is the true state of sleep in stage two. And then you move into deeper sleep. So slowed brain activity, but still present. Doesn't mean that your brain is not functioning or active when you are asleep. Stage three is a transition into stage four. And stage four is the deepest stage of all. Very hard for you to wake up, but it's not your most restful. Most restful is during REM. Stage four only occurs during the first few stages of the night. And then as you move in through your sleep cycles, REM will increase and the stages of NREM will decrease. I'll show you a visual. I'll show you a visual. It's very important you keep in mind that numerically speaking, it's not that REM happens every time after stage one because you only hit stage one the first time, the first go around when you are falling asleep, okay? So a person in REM sleep experiences beta waves. Um, beta waves, they're very, very similar to what we are experiencing when we are awake. So in that diagram we showed you back here, we have beta waves in this structure when we are awake and alert. They are identical in terms of beta waves here during REM sleep. So you are very active in terms of your brain functioning during your REM stage. Your muscles, however, are gonna be paralyzed. During the REM stage, your body paralyzes itself so the muscles don't move. So that way you don't end up acting out your dreams. Here is a visual that I was alluding to earlier of the 90 minute sleep cycles during your stages of sleep. Um, we told you earlier that you could on average have four to six cycles of sleep a night. Your REM will increase as you go through the evening and you can see that in these um, amounts of sleep. And if you look at how you fall asleep in this, so you're awake here, you fall into stage one, that transitionary time, down into stage two, stage three, stage four, and then you will move into going back down from four to three to two, and then you get here, but notice you don't have stage one anymore. It's been replaced by REM, OK? 
okay? So very important that you keep that in mind.